In this Gashia Classic video, I'm going to be talking about four things. Replacing the pump, replacing the main console switch, replacing the thermostats, and replacing the thermal fuse. A couple of weeks ago, I turned on my coffee maker and it sounded like the pump was having trouble. It was cutting in and out. So I ordered the pump, following the steps in the video of the whole Latte Love pump replacement video for the Gagia Classic. It only took about 20 minutes to replace this pump. Went smoothly. It's very easy to access. Everything went really well. I plugged my coffee maker back in and the pump didn't work. The problem was this switch and I know that because when I started jiggling the wires here and pushing the connector in, the pump started working. So I did some research online to find out how much this switch costs, and it is unavailable. So I watched one video on how to service it, and I probably should have watched a couple more videos. And I have links to the videos I watched afterwards that would have been very helpful beforehand. The problem didn't lie in all of these switches. It was in this one, the power switch. Behind this switch is a spring and a couple of contacts top, middle and bottom. And it was the top contact that had to be cleaned. You can see in this image, it is very dark. It should be the same color as the other contacts. When I have to clean corroded contacts, I usually depend on this method. I use a cotton swab dipped in nail polish remover and then dipped in baking soda. And then I rub the contact until it's clean, let it dry and wipe off the contacts, get the baking soda out of there, and it works really well. So my recommendation is if you turn this switch on and the light comes on and you hear the pump struggling, get the top off and jiggle these wires when it's plugged in, cautiously, and see if the pump is activated. It's very likely the switch. This was an extremely dirty set of contacts behind this switch. And if it is that switch, Watch a number of videos on how to take this apart. Uh, but I have to give you a little heads up about this switch. And that is the power light switch mechanism behind there is probably the only thing that uh, has to be serviced. So these two don't have to be. And the reason I'm mentioning that is once you extract this housing from the coffee maker, wrap tape around these two switches because if you don't and you follow the instructions and push a little bar out of there this entire unit falls apart and that's what happened to me there's four springs in there they shot all over the floor i was able to find all the pieces and i was able to clean the unit but it took me hours to reassemble it it's well worth your while to just tape these two units up and just remove this. So I reassembled everything, plugged it in, drew a shot of coffee, and then the Gagia continued to heat up and blew the thermal fuse. So I'll have to replace that, but I don't know why it blew, but I suspect this thermostat, this is the 145 degree, I'm not 100% sure. Being a thermostat, it should be normally closed. I don't hear any continuity here. So this thermostat must be the culprit. It must be open. So I'm going to replace this. And I also bought, this is the 145 degree steam thermostat. The brew thermostat is down in there and I'll be replacing that as well. I bought a kit that included the brew thermostat, the steam thermostat, some thermal paste, I have a new fuse and two butt connectors and to do that I need a little crimp tool and to remove the thermostats I need a 17 millimeter wrench. I've already used the meter so I'll be replacing all of these components and then putting together my switch. I have them all labeled and then the fuse and we will try it out. So I'll just start with the easy one since I have the two connectors off already and my main suspect. As you can see, there's a little remnant of thermal paste, so I'll just get rid of the old stuff. Take this, 
can't focus in on this, but it's stamped at 145 right here. I'm going to add a little thermal paste. Make sure you buy the right part. These are M4s. I'm just going to do it hand tight because it's a brass connector. It doesn't need to get them really super tight. So that's the first one done. So the second one is down in there. That's the, you can see the black band right there. You can see that the uh, parts are already labeled from six months ago. Oh yes, I'll need a, a screwdriver as well. So I'm just gonna And there it is. So I'll just grab this one that's apparently 107. Look for the little stamp that says 107. It does. <laughs> Probably can't see that, but it says 107 on it. There we go. That was snug. Mission accomplished. And now the only thing that I have to replace is this thermal connector, thermal fuse right here. I've already uh, slid off its protective cover and there's also a clamp down here that had to be removed. Uh, I highly recommend watching the video I have linked below uh, for how to uh, reinstall this. I forgot to mention that you'll need wire cutters. And I'm going to cut here and close to the fuse here so that I have a long part of the fuse left here. The reason I'm doing this is explained in the video I've linked below. My butt connectors are made for this gauge of wire, not for a double. So I'm going to use this lead on the double brown wire and this lead on the light blue one. I'm also going to trim it down to about the size of this. A little more muscle, I think. So before I put the cover back on and uh, lay this fuse in its little retaining area, I'm just going to check if there is continuity. And the fuse is good. So I have the thermal fuse secured underneath and it's covered from end to end. And now I have to rewire the switch I have them all numbered, so that shouldn't take too long. Well, there they all are. I think we're ready to check. Okay, so <laughs> I have it plugged in. I have it all assembled. I have water. I'm going to turn it on and just see if it turns on. It does. The oven's exploded. Next thing I have to do is prime the pump. So I'm going to open this. Oh, it was open. Got water coming out both there and there. Last time I did this, it got all steamy, so I'm just going to wait and just give it 10 minutes. Okay, so I've waited several minutes and I am ready to draw a shot and try to steam some milk. 